This is a reading from the lesson on the epistle of St. Paul to the Romans. Seventh of January, 1948. Chapter 1, verses 20, 21, 22 of the Epistle to the Romans. The Most Holy Author says, Those who suffocate the truth of God in injustice divide themselves in the two evil classes of the negators who say, I do not believe in God because I do not see him. And the demolishers, the mad, who would want to demolish God and by not being able to do so, destroy the monument of the testimony of God with enormous and futile effort and work, work, work. They do not but make the dust and mildews fall, making it thus more beautiful and shining, because by playing so with open cards, they do not but awaken holy reactions in upright men. These two categories of wretches who obstruct peace on earth and peace beyond earth are, on top of everything, liars, or they confess to being fools lacking in reason, because it is not possible for man to deny God just taking into consideration man himself, the harmonious formation of his nature in which without clashes or dissonances the animal and the spirit intersect, forming a wonderful whole. Only if he considers this, man cannot deny the existence of God by saying, I do not believe because I do not see God. To speak of degrading descendants does not serve to justify the spontaneous prodigy of the intelligent man. Evolution could never give a beast visible human perfection. Speaking to those who do not acknowledge the spiritual, I do not speak but of that human material perfection which is therefore visible. However, even only this is sufficient to negate the evolution of the beast to man and to testify to the divine creation. God is visible in his invisible perfections, in his eternal power and in his divinity, in the intelligence of the intelligent man, through created things, everything, from the drop of frost to the sun, from the sea to volcanoes, from the worm to man, from arboreal mildews to gigantic sequoias, from light to darkness, speaks of God. He shows it in his divine power. This is why I have said that those who negate God, who is visible in all things, are liars, or confess to being fools. However, no, Foolish they are not. They are the subjugates of falsehood, pride, and hate. This only is what they are, because truly they know that God exists, but they negate him, repudiate him, and attempt to scorn him instead of praising and glorifying him, and they hate him instead of having gratitude for the infinite providences which he has for them, even though they do not deserve them. If God were not God, that is, he who is above malice and vengeance, if God were similar to them, would he perhaps give them air, light, sun, and food? Do not object. He gives it for those who are good, and because of these, all the others enjoy it also. He cannot make the good die in order to remove from the evil ones air, light, sun, and food. And who could prevent him from doing so? Everything is possible to God. However, he is the one who makes the rays of the sun rain down upon the good and upon the wicked in order to caress the good and admonish the wicked by gi giving them time to convert, because God is patient, and his revenge is the forgiveness given seventy times seven, and seven hundred times seven. For as long as there is life in man, he is tolerant. Then he will judge, and his judgment will be irrevocable. He has the last word, and it is such that even the most pertinaciously delirious of men will come out from his blasphemous ravings, and amazed like one who is taken out from a dark cell into a great light, dazzled by the most divine light, will come to himself and cry out, Cursed be my proud mind. I have denied the truth, and it will strike me forever. I worshipped that which was not, and I negated that which is. I could have had the incorruptible prize that comes from the fusion with the perfect incorruptible one. I preferred the manifold corruption, and eternal but corrupt, forever, forever will I sink into it. January 8th, 1948, to the Romans, chapter 1, from the verse 24 to 31 included. The Most Holy Author says, 
more precise than a painting that portrays the truth to perfection, more exact than a chronicle that faithfully reports the events and the morals of an era. Here is how the Pauline epistle describes the morals of this era, which is sat satanizing itself. Every word is a brush stroke of color in order to outline the man of this era, nine-tenths of the men of this era, all the necessary hues to paint not the man, son of God, as God would have liked him to be, not the man, Superman, as these human-looking monsters believe themselves to be, who represent nine-tenths of men, but to paint the anti-man, the degenerated child of God, the frightful fruit of the union of humanity with corruption, the servant of Satan, are used in the perfect portrait. And the less atrocious colors are given by the epithets, whisperers, braggers, fools, disorderly, then the colors grow even darker as far as the shades which already have the color of the deepest hell of sins against nature, so diffuse now, used not only to satisfy their reprobate sense, but rather to the satisfaction of their avidity for riches. However, for as much as Paul speaks to the men of his time, to men living in the midst of pagans, more than to pagans, to those without any god, because if they were to have still respected a god, that is, a moral law, even if imperfect, because even a man who is absolutely ignorant of every religious code feels instinct instinctively when he is not one who does not want to feel the existence of a supreme being to whom his spirit aspires to out of his own spiritual nature, whom he seeks as spiritual, which is that of reu reuniting himself to the spirit from whom he had his beginning, to ones without a god, voluntarily willed to be ignored so as not to have any moral law, even if only a natural one, to hinder them. For as much as Paul spoke to these men living amongst these monsters, no, he still left out the darkest color of the painting. Which, why did he leave it out? Because he ignored it. He had risen with his spirit to the third heaven, and he came to know many truths, even those of the end times. However, he did not learn of one perversity of these semi-final times, a perversity which presupposes the coming of the apostasy and the manifestation of the man of sin. He would write to the Thess Thessalonians, Already the mystery of the iniquity is in action. But he then refuted it by saying, There only is one now who restrains, and who will restrain him until he be removed from our midst. When nine-tenths of humanity, however, rejects the one who restrains the evolving of the mystery of the iniquity, as far as making itself from a mystery to a horrendous reality, with the nefarious kingdom of the beast who will proclaim himself God by demanding divine honors. When to the beast, however, divine honors are already given, when it is invoked and evoked, however, with obscene rites for his honor, can God continue to defend against the advancing of the serpent of the abyss? And what name shall I give to the obscene rites, to the horrendous orgies finishing in satanic copulations in which the Lord and priest is Satan himself? And what name shall I use in order to correctly call this supreme sin, this satanic religion, superior in atrocity to every other more barbarous ancient religion, or which is still existent among savages today? Here, the bodies of the innocent victims are not immolated to the gods like at one time to Molech. Here, civilized men are not killed in order to pay homage to a savage god. Here, one immolates the immolated one. Here one strikes the innocent one. Here one gives in sacrifice to the adversary, the incarnate Son of God, living in the most holy sacrament, with his body, blood, soul, and divinity. Oh, how Lucifer must be laughing in his horrendous laughter in these times and hours of his glory. It is he, the cursed one, the fulminated one, the one driven out by God on his throne, on that throne unto which men raise him up, and to his horrendous mockery he is offered the Lamb, he whom Satan was never able to conquer, he in whom Satan was never able to enter, he who was victorious over him a hundred and thousands of times, who, who has conquered him for twenty centuries, and who will conquer him to the end by freeing spirits of goodwill from his short-lived triumph. He, Satan, will be conquered, but in the meantime, he has the appearance of a conqueror. And the sacrament of sacraments, this mystery of love for which even the most seraphic love of man is never enough to give it worthy honor, is given by men as a means to Satan for his short-lived triumph. Paul did not know this. 
No, the mercy of God kept this sin, which makes all of heaven tremble a secret from him. And listen well, O you who tremble alongside with heaven in horror. And if those who profane the sacred species should ignore that in them is the living and true Christ, just as he was on earth and is in heaven, if they do not believe of his presence in the consecrated species, their practices would come down to a mere act of magic, however they know, and this constitutes their sin without forgiveness. The prayer of the Redeemer is, of, is not applicable for them, because they know what, that which they do, and the word of Paul is not, also not applicable, who, having known that the divinity of that which is thought and believed rewards the just and punishes the evil, because a concept of justice, even if very imperfect, is still thought of by every believer in the divinity which he has created within himself, or who knows it to be true and one, did not understand that he, do, who, that he who does such things is worthy of death, because they do understand, and notwithstanding this, they still commit the supreme profanation. <clears throat>